Hi, I'm Brandon with Mold Inspection Sciences. I'm here with my associate Craig, and today we're going to demonstrate how to collect surface samples for direct examination. We have simulated the following mold growth scenarios to avoid the need for ourselves to wear personal protective equipment. Surface sampling is recommended when during our mold investigation, suspect mold-like growth is found. It is used to first determine if that suspect material is in fact mold. Just because something looks like mold doesn't always mean that it is in fact mold. Dirt, dust, lint, and soot are commonly mistaken as mold. The second reason surface sampling is used is to determine the type of mold. Due to the many varying species, colors, textures, and growth formations of mold, there is just no way to determine the type of mold we are dealing with without proper sampling. Knowing the type of mold we are dealing with can mean the difference between expensive remediation and simple house cleaning techniques. The first type of surface sample we will be collecting is a swab sample. Swab samples are used on porous or irregular surfaces. The sanitary swab is used to collect the suspect material. The swab is then inserted into the media tube where the tip is submerged into a specialized gel. The sample is now protected and able to be shipped to the lab for analysis. The next type of sample we will be collecting is a tape lift sample. This method is actually preferred over swab sampling, but can only be used on flat, smooth surfaces. The tape slide is first removed from its packaging, and then the protective cover is removed from the adhesive. The adhesive portion of the slide is then placed on the suspect material and is firmly pressed to ensure proper adhesion. Then the slide is removed and placed into the protective case. The sample is now ready to be shipped to the lab for analysis. The last type of sample we will be collecting today is a bulk sample. Of all the methods we have shown you today, bulk sampling is the preferred method. However, bulk sampling is not always feasible as the material that the mold-like growth is attached to must be cut or damaged to collect the sample. In this scenario, we have simulated mold-like growth on a box. A piece of the impacted box is cut and removed, and the bulk sample is then placed into a bag for shipment to the lab. It is important to note that surface sampling should be performed in combination with ambient air sampling. This will help us determine if the potential mold sources are actively sporulating and if mold exposure via airborne mold spores is a concern. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us. Um, you can definitely check us out on the web at www.moldsci.com. That's M O L D. SCI.com. Thanks.